opening plenary, starting with equity at the center. Please put your hands together for poet, artist, and organizer, Michael Reyes. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? Awesome. I was like, yes, I'm going out in the morning, are people going to be there? And then I realized what kind of conference I was at, so I knew people would be here. Um, so it's nice to see y'all. Y'all look beautiful. My name, my stage name is Reyes Poetry, um, and I've just spoken word. And today, um, I was invited to open up just to give us some energy. We're speaking a lot about a lot of different issues. And so the first thing I want to do is, since it's the morning, I want to make a caldo together. Some people call it stew. Some people call it gumbo. Uh, my people call it caldo. We're gonna mix up some ingredients and put it in a pot and we're gonna make a poem together. Can we make a poem together? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the way that this works is whatever words you give me, we're gonna put in this, this caldo. But if it doesn't taste good, it's not really my fault to give me the ingredients, but it might be good. <laughs> so any of y'all got a relative that don't know how to cook at all? Yeah. 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 And what you gotta do when you go to that house? Bring your own food. Hey, add salt, the little more salt. If you don't know that person, it's probably your that's that person. That's why it's you. You're the person that don't know how to cook. So start reflecting on yourself. Um, so let's get some words. Uh, let me hear what's on people's minds. That's when it got quiet. All the intelligent people in that Poverty. Poverty. Okay, education. I like the way this poem is going. Um, Power, art, Salud. corazón. Okay, then we're gonna switch it up a little bit. Salud. Um, let me get some uh, song titles. Sabor a mí. I'll do my best in Spanish. Sometimes my Spanish ain't so good. Now everybody gonna hit me with Spanish words. That's messed up. I don't get through it. Uh, <laughs> I know, because that's what I would think in my head. I'm like, yeah, now I know. I'm gonna get his weakness. What else? What else we got? We will rock you. We will rock you. Contra la corriente. Okay, yeah, I'm not doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just be honest, I would ruin that. I would, I would not be able to pronounce that or even say that. What else? What you do what for love. Despacito? What you do for love. Yes. All right, and then movie titles. Any movie titles? Black Panther. Black Panther. Dora the Explorer. Oh, <laughs> Childhood, so. <laughs> that movie looks horrible. I hope nobody was a part of that production. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Star Trek. All right, Star Trek. Wonder... Y tu mamá también. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll put that one in the back saw that movie. Y tu mamá también. All right, last one. How are we going to end it? Coming to America. Okay, we'll end that. We'll end it with Coming to America. That's cool. Donya Florin or two husbands. Oh God. <laughs> I right, coming to America. That's our last thing. Let's see what happens. Can you can you all right, cool. Can you hear me? Okay, good. All right, so let's see what we do with these ingredients. You might have to add some salt, maybe not. I don't know. So let's see. Hispanics in philanthropy, moving mind, transforming time. I use my words to transform poverty. Through education, we change these situations. I fight at things like immigration, against things like gentrification, try to change these situations. I fight not just for power, but for equity, unity, for community, to have those solutions. I use art as my tool, as I shape like Michelangelo, making sculptures, painting pictures with words. In mi corazón, I feel it deep within my heart, more than the art. Salud to you, good morning. Good morning, it's time to change situations and feel that pain within our heart because sabor, rich with flavor. It's me, it's me, we will rock you, not just by population, but because we change and fight those things through activism, fighting the system. We will rock you, we found love. Loved. We are like Black Panthers, but more than just movies. We talking about history. We talking about those things that sometimes mean more to you and me. I fight like Dora the Explorer. I try to explore the unknown. Sometimes I'm in my zone writing poetry like Wonder Woman, but this ain't really about superheroes. This is about boots on the ground. We take it back around. They say, y tu mama también. Yeah, I know those situations and words. I speak Spanish sometimes, trilingual, bilingual. See, I'm from Detroit, the city of D, city of Motown, because when my people came around, we came to America. I'm coming 
coming to America. We're coming to America. We are from America. We are on the grounds in America. We are America. See, I use these words to transform against this poetry and pen, beginning to end like the parameters sitting back and forth like a laser ray. Today, just a little bit of poetry for your ear. Have no fear. just to share, uh, I want to be respectful of time, but for me, you know, being a part of these type of conferences and these organizations, it's really important to see so many faces that look like my community, that are from my community. And um, sometimes when we're creating um, and we're doing these large kind of projects, we don't get to see the end of our work. And so it's really important that we plant seeds. And so I took this story that I took from the Zapatistas. I took it and they translated it from their native language into Spanish. And then it went to Spanish to English. And now I translated it to like good English. So bear with me. So um, this is about a person that plants seeds, just like all of us in this room. When we're thinking about philanthropy and work, um, let's plant seeds. So long ago in a the mountain, there was an old man that used to plant seeds. And every single day, he would plant and plant and plant and plant. And people would make fun of him and ask him, why are you planting seeds, seeds that you would never see grow? But it didn't matter, that man kept planting. And one day that old man died and passed. So a few generations later, some children went high into the mountains to play. And they saw this beautiful forest, this beautiful garden, and they were amazed by its, by its beauty. And so they ran back to the village and they, they asked their parents, their parents said this shouldn't be possible, that this garden and this forest is growing in this location. And so they went back to their village and talked to the, the oldest person that they could find. And they asked her, how is this possible? And she thought about it, and she thought about it, and she thought about it. And she said, oh, I remember. It was the crazy old man. We used to call him the crazy old man. And he would just plant seeds every day. So after a short discussion, the village decided to honor him. And they decided to honor him because in the winter, the wood from the forest kept them warm. In the summer, the canopy kept them cool. The roots from the trees allowed plants to grow and it nourished their body. And so even though this crazy old man who was made fun of, who was left out, who was in his own world, he kept planting and planting. So plant seeds of resistance, no matter how small or feeble they may be. Plant seeds of change, let them grow and cover our pain. Plant seeds to unify the peoples of the Americas, the people of the world. Plant seeds to grow a canopy of change, a rainforest of hope, a flower of love, a garden of peace. Plant seeds for justice and equality. Plant seeds for those who struggle and toil. Plant seeds so they may grow, so our children may eat of its fruit, so it may cleanse our bodies, so the fruit may heal us. Plant seeds so our air may be clean. Plant seeds so we may drink fresh, sweet water. Plant seeds to destroy imperialism, white supremacy, global domination, allow its branches to break through the concrete and steel. Plant seeds so we can dream of a new world, so when its leaves we can hear the joyous voices of freedom, so when its flowers we can see its beauty, so when its branches we can feel its reassuring strength, so when its trunk we can stand firm on who we are. So when it's roots, we can remember what we have forgotten. Plant seeds, nurture them, water them, love them. Plant seeds and let them grow. Let us plant seeds with the rest of the world to be an example of what is possible. Plant seeds, plant seeds because it is necessary. Plant seeds. Um, now I have one more piece, um, and I really appreciate y'all taking time to listen to poetry in the morning. Uh, sometimes it's kind of challenging, but I'm glad I was invited. Thank you for the invitation. I'm always honored to be able to share my work. So I wrote this piece for HBO, and they asked me to write a Latino piece. They're like, yeah, you know about Latinos. Um, and so uh, I was like, you sure you heard my work? So I'm going to read this last piece. Uh, and to me, this is just about the fabric of who we are um, as Latinos and the complexity of our identity. We are the wretched of the earth, the labor that moves the sand. We are spicks, wetbacks, beaners, pork chops. We are U.S. tree failure. We are body old dwellers, culture creators, cut across communal skies. We are loving abuelos and abuelas. We are community builders, stopping gentrification. We are presos politicos. We are freedom fighters. We are peasant farmers, urban harvest. We are the children of Latin America, vast speaking forgotten tongues in a new land, an ancient land. We are the children of African slaves, indigenous blood, Spanish conquest. We are Irish, German, Arab, Jewish, Muslim. We are the children of Simón Bolivar. We are the children of Guadalupe. We are the children of Pancho Villa, Zapata, Ache, Aralita, Lolita, Lebron. We are the children of Zapatistas, exiled to oblivion. 
We are love, compassion, and hope. We are Cesar Suelga and Cisa Puede. We are Lolita Shots on Congress. We are the Brown Beret Chicano movement. We are the young lords. We are the New Rican poets penning Puerto Rican pride. We are undocumented peoples crossing borders, breaking boundaries and barriers. We are separated families split by concrete thorns made of steel. We are Boricua, Chicano, Shah Rican, Mexicano, Puerto Rican, Dominicano, Centro Americano, Mexican, Rican, Latino, Shah, Cano. We are breakers, DJs, MCs, penning poems on walls. We are despised, hated, loved, and asceticized. We are faces and crowds against the wars in Afghanistan. Stand Iraq and Palestine. We are those who stand alongside blacks to free our people from modern day slavery. We are Christ, Moses, get the guato for it seen. We are the sun that shines bright. We are unified community chanting Boricua Mexicano, luchando mano mano. We are the new American dream. We are those who create love from hate. Hope from despair, compassion from none, humility from arrogance. We are those who say live and help to live. We are 500 years of resistance. Welcome to America. Welcome to the new world. Yes. Peace. Thank you. the president and CEO of Hispanics in Philanthropy, Ana Mari Aguilagos. Gracias, Michael. This is the second time I've seen him perform. I can see him perform again and again and again. Amazing, right? So, I'm so thrilled to welcome you to Washington, D.C. This is my city. It's the city I call home. So thank you for coming. I see old friends. I see new friends I met last night. I see some of you that I don't know yet, but will soon to be friends. So thank you for coming. It was very important for us to have you here with us at HIP in Washington, D.C. Um, estamos en la casa, we are in Washington, D.C., so thank you. <laughs> when I started at HIP as president a year and a half ago, many of you know that I went on a 46 city tour. In just six months, I went to 46 cities, and that's because I wanted to hear from all of you. I wanted to understand what the next generation of work for HIP should be. I wanted to understand it from you, and we got that, and what you'll see in the next two days, I hope reflects what you all told us. During those first few months, I was also searching for a word. I wanted that word, a word that would be like my torch song, that would really reflect the times, and the, that it would be powerful. I wanted it to catch this new HIP 2.0 that we were creating. And that word, it didn't come to me immediately. I was getting a little bit nervous by June. But then I came across this lady that maybe some of you know, Cristina Jimenez. I don't know if she's here in the audience. If she is, I really need to thank her. I know she'll be here later this afternoon. Because when she spoke last summer, I discovered my word. She inspired me because that word is unapologetic. Good word, huh? Yeah. yeah. It reflects our entire community, where we are, and where we need to be. Some of you maybe are asking, why does she find unapologetic so inspiring? I'll tell you why. It's because today, in the US, Latinos are 58 million people. Marco said that doesn't even count Puerto Rico that you were here for the breakfast. That would put us at over 60 million. That is one out of every five Americans. $1.7 trillion in buying power. And guys, I tell you, that is power. It's also starting to become palpable change. We saw it in the last midterm elections in November. Our gente showed up in record numbers, and no matter who they voted for, Latinos were exercising their voice. In addition to that, a record number of our Latinos and our Latinas ran for office for the very first time, and so many of them won. So yes, sometimes it gets hard. 
but we are challenging ideas about what this country looks like. And yet, even so, some things look really great. The consistent attack on Latinos and on immigrants is still quite vast. Having been a civil servant myself, it's distressing, it's heart-wrenching to see this administration. It's implementing policy changes across every single agency of the federal government, and it is a willful intent to marginalize and to disenfranchise Latinx people, low-income people, people of color. So since last summer, I'm an unapologetic, and I am outraged. Yes, that's my right. I get to be angry. Because how can it be that under the government's custody, seven children have died since December? I get to be angry. Because how can it be that during the delegations that HIP led last summer, we witnessed parents that were separated from their babies. We witnessed kids living in cages firsthand. I get to be angry. When we visited Tijuana and we visited a youth shelter, we learned that two teenage kids were missing. By the end of the day, we found out that those two teenage children were dead. So yes, I get to be angry and I will never, ever be the same. That's right. govern responsibly, that our values of humanity, dignity, fairness, and equity be upheld. Today I challenge you all to think about how we all can make changes in our own field in philanthropy, keeping the bright light, the hope, the promise of philanthropy shining so that it addresses the racism and the bias that is polarizing our beautiful country. Philanthropy can bridge the divides, can leverage our power, and together we can turn can into does. As the new leader of HIP, I can't help but ask myself, what can philanthropy look like beyond this year, beyond 2019? Who's giving? How much are they giving? And who is philanthropy leaving out? I tell you the numbers, they're just not pretty. HIPS 2009 report, it showed that less than 1% of US foundation funding that year targeted Latinx communities, and that was as compared to 16% of the population we represented back then, 10 years ago. Fast forward, the data that you will see this afternoon with our new Latinx funders dashboard shows that the gap is only widening. So as our percentage of funding falls, even while our percentage of our population is growing. If you think about it another way, philanthropy is actually replicating the disinvestment that our community receives from the broader economy. And let's remember, it is transnational. So let's broaden our focus and let's look at funding by continents. In 2014, International funding for regions such as Western Europe, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Asia all got 17%, 26%, 25% of this funding that goes to international causes. Guess what's the number for Latin America? I think Arturo can tell us, I see him in the front. 6%, 6%. And that number marries, mirrors what we're seeing nationally in startup investments, and this number will kill you. Less than two, two single digit, no, two percent of startup dollars go to black and brown enterprises combined, and I'm going to say that again because it's worth repeating. Less than two percent of startup dollars go to black and brown enterprises combined. So Hispanic philanthropy is on a mission, and we're on a mission to change that unapologetically. And I know that we can do it. In the year after Hurricane Maria, we took action and we rallied our network after Maria and in just a few days we raised $600,000 and I must add that today we're drinking cafe, ama, 
AMA. And Angelique, Angelique Sina is here somewhere. And thank you, Angelique. Um, Dream Cafe Alma, it's amazing. It comes caffeinated or decaf, which is what I drink. Um, and it's helping the people of Puerto Rico. So thank you, Angelique. But that $600,000 that we raised in just a few days, with your help, that money got people housed, fed, and back to some semblance of a normal life. That response was critical, but equally critical is investing in the economic growth of the community post-hurricane. That's why we invested in Grupo Guayacan, a nonprofit startup accelerator in Puerto Rico that develops entrepreneurs who are redefining the way recovery looks. One of those entrepreneurs that Guayacan supported, his name is Juan. Juan saw a problem. The campesinos up in the mountains, they had food, but it was in danger of rotting. The mercados in Old San Juan desperately needed food but there was no existing infrastructure connecting them. So Juan created this app to redeploy taxi drivers, because remember, is that right after the hurricane, the taxi drivers had no tourists, so they were not making a livelihood. And so this app brought the food from the markets, I mean, from the fincas up in the mountains to the restaurants and to the markets in the cities. Brillante, right? <laughs> With one app, an entire economy started to recover. But think about it. The chance that Juan would have found an investor without Grupo Guayacan is slim to none. And that's where HIP and you, our partners, step in. We're investing in grassroots organizations, nonprofits, and entrepreneurs to use our passion, our talent, time to thrive and support our communities. And this is our philanthropy, it's by us and with us. When there's a crisis, we respond. We're not asking for permission, we're far from asking. And we're not apologizing anymore either. We are unapologetic about doing this because we know the power of giving. In 2016, a Pew Research report showed that Latinx co collectively gave 5% of our household wealth to charity, 5%. That's 3% higher than white families. And our philanthropy is more than the stereotype of people writing big checks. We had this recognition five years ago. We knew it. We knew that many of our Latinos, we are givers. And that's the seed that sprouted Hip Give, our crowdfunding platform for Latino nonprofits across the Americas. You can visit HipGive in the foyer. On HipGive, you'll see that we're not just engaging the wealthy, we're engaging la gente, $10 at a time, to make a big change. So I ask you again, what will philanthropy look like beyond 2019? And I have an answer for you. It is brown, it is black, it's indigenous and queer, it's trans, it's young and it's old, it's differently abled. And together, we're going to be investing in our own economic power, in our political power. We're going to be funding the brilliant young entrepreneurs like Juan, who traditional funders have turned away. Their success is our success, and that's my vision, a big, bold new fund that we're launching later today. It's the Power Up Fund. And that fund is built on this recognition that there are Juans everywhere. Our entrepreneurs and our nonprofits are brilliant. They're innovative. But for centuries, not decades, systemic racial and economic barriers across the entire hemisphere have been leaving them out. The Power Up Fund, its mission is simple to provide capital for change, to build our power. And you will get to see this fund in action. It's gonna be fun this afternoon. Stick around for our Tiburon Tank, its own version of the Shark Tank. Entrepreneurs will be pitching their amazing ideas to solve social problems, and a panel of judges, and you guys, because you have an app, will all be, will all be voting, and you will decide who we will invest in. And who knows, we might find ourselves a one this afternoon. Nuestro futuro depends on what each one of us does every single day. 
And to this we say, juntos podemos. I can't wait to build this future together with you. I'm unapologetic. I hope you like my word, and I invite you to be unapologetic with me. And thank you all for being here today. I know many of you came from long distances. Thank you to our Emeritus Directors, our Emeritus Founders, to Diana, I know she's here. Um, on your shoulders we stand. To our past and our present board members, you have demonstrated fearlessness and courage. Our incredible staff who work tirelessly, and I swear no problem is too big nor too small for them to tackle. My incredible family, Roger, Alexia, my brother John Luis is here too. I couldn't do this work, and you have been supporting me every step of the way. Gracias to everyone. There's a lot of people behind the scenes here, um, and also the white staff, the cleaning staff, the security staff here at the Ronald Reagan Center and at the Willard. Thank you for making sure that we're comfortable and safe. And with that, comencemos, huh? let's get started. <laughs> Good.